What's up YouTube? Alvaro here. Welcome to the Bilingual Stock Market channel again. In this channel we talk about the stock market and we do it in two different languages, English and Spanish. So if English is not your cup of tea, you can also watch just for the same video narrated by me in Spanish. And in this video, I want to take a deep dive into Sundial Grower's latest earnings report. I want to pretty much tell you guys the good, the bad and the ugly of what was reported last week. And I also want to share with you my personal opinion when it comes to the future of Sundial Growers. And at the end of the video, and as I always do it, I will be breaking down Sundial Growers from a technical standpoint for those who might be interested in taking a short term trade on SNDL. So with that further ado, let's get started. We have a lot to talk about and I don't want to hold you guys long. Okay, guys, so let's get started. And what you can see on your screens is the full year and fourth quarter 2020 financial and operational highlights of Sundial Growers. This report is already available on Sundial Growers website. Okay, I actually read it three times in order to prepare the stuff for this video. So if any of you wants to read the complete report, as I said before, it is available on Sundial Growers website, okay? So, according to the research work that I did, there are seven key points that are worth pointing out here, okay? So, I am going to read here for you guys. Ah, and before reading, guys, um, all of the numbers of this report are expressed in Canadian dollars, okay? So, keep that in mind. All right, number one. Sundial Growers completed financial restructuring and eliminated 227 million aggregate principal amount of debt. Okay, this is very important, guys. So, as of now, Sundial Growers is a debt free company. Okay, so very but very important because most companies out there, guys, have long term debt. And I am talking about very well-established companies such as Amazon, Tesla, uh, PepsiCo, Coca-Cola, Google, Apple. All of those companies have long-term debt, okay? But in the case, guys, of MBA companies, it is very normal seeing debts that are way larger than their cash position. Case in point, the long-term debt of Aurora Cannabis is $343 million. The long-term debt of Canopy Growth is $619 million. So I think if any of you knows about any other MBA company that is debt-free, please let me know and drop a comment down below. But I think that this is the first MBA company ever, okay? that gets to a position in which they eliminated all of their long-term debt. Very, but very interesting move here for Sundial Growers, okay? Number two, Sundial Growers has $60.4 million unrestricted cash in hand at December 31st, 2020, and $719 million unrestricted cash in hand at March 15th, 2021. And as of September of last year, they had in their balance sheet only $21 million in cash and cash equivalents, okay? This is an improvement in their cash position by a factor of 34. Very, but very interesting, okay? Number three, gross revenue increased by 10% to $73.3 million in 2020 compared to 2019. Number four, general and administrative costs were reduced by 18% in 2020, from $38.9 million down to $32 million, okay? And this is very important, guys, because I have always told you that MJ companies are money-burning machines. So here we have a Canadian MJ company that is making an effort in order to reduce general and administrative costs, okay? So this is definitely another plus for sundial growers okay number five cultivation and production costs were reduced by 75 percent from 22.4 million in q4 of 2019 to 5.7 million in the fourth quarter of 2020 again more and more efforts in order to improve sundial growers from a financial standpoint okay and number six 
net revenue for Q4 2020 increased by 8% from $12.9 million in Q3 2020 to $13.9 million in Q4 of 2020, okay? So this was not a crazy improvement from a net revenue standpoint, but at least it is an improvement, okay? And number seven, guys, and here comes the ugly. Net loss, which is a critical aspect, okay, of any business. So the net loss for Sundial Growers in Q4 of 2020 was $64.1 million compared to a net loss of $71.4 million in Q3 of 2020, okay? And this is the problem, guys, with MBA companies, okay? Because the math is simple. <clears throat> Listen, Sundial Growers made a revenue of $13.9 million in Q4 of 2020, but Sundial Growers lost $64.1 million in the same quarter. So Sundial Growers lost five times the revenue they made in Q4 of 2020. This is the ugly. Okay, guys, uh, so... Let me share with you my personal opinion, okay, in regards to the future of Sundial Growers. Because we can make the case that Sundial Growers has, as of now, a very good cash position. They have more than $700 million in cash, okay, and they paid off all of their long-term debts, which were very smart moves, all right? So I think that Sundial Growers is going to is going to be able to stay in business for many more quarters, all right? However, with this revenue versus money burning ratio, because this company is still burning a lot of money, Sundial Growers really has to expand their operations, their commercial operations a lot in order to, first of all, become a profitable company, not to mention, guys, in order to avoid, you know, bankruptcy later on down the road. Because this company, as I said before, they are making good moves, all right, from a long-term perspective. But, you know, they are raising money. They, they have raised a lot of money via public offerings. Uh, they have also, as I said before, paid off all of their long-term debt. And they are restructuring the company in order to reduce operating costs, okay? So... This company, from a long-term perspective, is definitely making, you know, very uh, smart moves. But guys, you need to understand that this is, this is still being a speculative investment. Take a look at this. I, I want to show you my current position on Sundial Growers. So, as of now, I own 1,000 shares at an average cost of $1.82. I actually purchased... 500 more shares on last Friday, okay, once this report came out, because as I said before, I like the moves that this company is making from a long-term perspective. However, I, I am investing an amount of money in this company that I am willing to lose, okay? So that's my advice uh, when it comes to Sundial Growers. And remember that I am not a financial advisor. So if any of you wants to invest in Sundial Growers at a long term, you guys have to do your own research work and reach your own conclusions. But this is still being a risky investment, okay? But let's see how everything plays out for Canadian MBA companies now that here in the U.S., uh, we have more and more states uh, legalizing uh, MJ because I think, guys, that if Canadian MJ companies can eventually sell their products here in the U.S., you know, in a massive way, then the, the story of Sundial Growers and most Canadian companies might have a happy ending, okay? Otherwise without being able to allocate their products here in the U.S., which is such a massive addressable market, uh, I don't know. And at the same time, burning so much cash, the future of Sundial Growers and Canopy Growth and Aurora Cannabis and all of the Canadian MBA companies is definitely uncertain, okay? So try to invest, as I said before, an amount of money that you can lose. I 
I am a shareholder of Sundial Growers. I actually want to have some sort of exposition to this business because I think, as I said before, that if we have a massive legalization of MBA here in the US, these companies are going to start making a lot of money. So I am investing in Sundial Growers, but I am aware of the risks involved, okay? And what are your thoughts about Sundial Growers, guys? Do you think that this company could potentially go bankrupt? Or do you think that regardless of what happens here in the US, when it comes to the federal legalization of MJ companies such as Sundial Growers, Canopy Growth and Aurora Cannabis can, uh, you know, uh, turn into profitable companies regardless of what happens here with MJ in the US? Please drop a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the technicals of Sundial Growers for those who are interested in taking a short-term trade. Okay guys, when it comes to the technicals of Sundial Growers, we can see a clear uptrend channel on the 4-hour chart. And if I zoom in on the 4-hour chart, we can see that Sundial Growers is actually trading above the moving averages, the 180 SMA and the 50 SMA on the 4-hour chart. Let me zoom in a bit more so you guys can notice this, okay? This is very, but very bullish. So if next week, guys, you notice that Sundial Growers keeps on consolidating above the moving averages, it might be gathering strength to make a nice move to the upside, okay? Probably to the upper line of this uptrend channel at around $1.90, $1.96, okay? And take a look at this. The upper line of this uptrend channel coincides with a former area of support for Sundial Growers at around $1.92 per share, okay? So whenever Sundial Growers pulls up to the upside, it is very likely to find a very strong resistance at a spot that acted before as a strong support, okay? So watch out next week, guys, with Sundial Growers, as I said before, consolidating above the moving averages. And take a look at this, guys. Say that you pick up some shares of Sundial Growers at $1.47 or $1.50. If the scenario that I am talking about happens to unfold, we are talking about a 23% profit, guys, from $1.43 up to $1.93. We are talking about a 23% profit. That's a very solid profit, taking into account that we are talking about a short-term trade, okay? So Sundial Growers looking very, but very bullish, trading above the moving averages. And let's see if next week it can actually break above the $1.90 or $2 per share. Okay, guys, I am going to wrap it up here. Thank you very much for your attention. If you found value in this video, please hit that like button for me. And remember, we are posting stock market update videos Mondays through Thursdays right after the market closes. We are breaking down the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq 100. And I am also telling you guys the three stocks on the top of my watch list for the next trading session. So if you want to get our notifications in a timely manner, you'd better be subscribed to the channel if you haven't done it yet. Please also remember to activate the notification bell right down below and follow us on Instagram. Guys, at Bilingual Stock Market, we are posting news and information on a daily basis on our Instagram account as well. And remember that this is the Bilingual Stock Market channel, the YouTube channel in which we talk about the stock market, but we do it into different languages, English and Spanish. But most importantly, this is the YouTube channel in which we know that the wonderful world of Wall Street is not for geniuses, it is for entrepreneurs just like you guys and myself. My name is Alvaro and I will see you guys tomorrow right after the market closes. Peace out.